This is Musical Talk. Musical Talk. The UK's independent musical theatre podcast. Musical Musical Talk. Talk. The UK independent musical theatre podcast. You know, it's an absolute pleasure to be able to sit down nearly every week with you and discuss shows. This is episode number 432 of Musical Talk. I'm not that old, Nick. I am, and I feel it. Uh, Joined here by Professor Robert Gordon and Goldsmiths, University. Hello, Robert. Hello, Nick. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Today we're going to be discussing a that lovely uh, thing which we love talking about on this show, those terms, a new British musical that we saw at the beautiful Curve Leicester, Robert. Tell us a bit about the Curve Leicester before we delve into what we thought of the show. Well, I, I've never been to the Curve before, uh, seeing Adrian Mole, and I, I think it was it's an absolutely stunning new theatre. It's large, and I think they actually reduced the size of the stage and auditorium for this show. By about two-thirds, I think. Be- yes, because this is quite an intimate show. But the only thing about it, it's in the middle of Leicester, and it's it's very impressive once you're inside. you can't. It's quite cunningly designed, so you can't quite see all of it from the outside. But it has a number of different entrances, and you circle the entire auditorium. I mean, there's a, a kind of a foyer area, but a lot of it is sort of spread out as a sort of circular band around the the theatre as a whole. It reminded me of the Hampstead (coughs) Theatre. Yes, but it's much bigger and... uh, That same, there's a building and then there's a theatre plonked in the middle of it. Yes. There's an auditorium plonked in the middle of it. That's true. But I think what's rather extraordinary about this is the way that the architect has designed it, almost like the Royal Albert Hall. So you can come in from a series of different entrances and there's different cafes and different bars and different bits of the foyer uh, around mm. the, uh, the the whole theatre itself. A beautiful building and I think a very, a very good atmosphere within the auditorium. And it's one of these theatres that has its own on-site creative department so they make the sets there they make the costumes there that's very welcome in this day and age because you know so many theater buildings are are are, uh, uh, theaters like that the old great regional rep theaters are being closed and to find a theater which as it were makes its own productions on site is remarkable the head chap there is uh, a wonderfully talented director called nikolai foster tell us about nikolai robert yes well i've only seen a couple of nick's uh, productions but i was massively impressed by his uh, production of The Kiss of the Spider-Woman, which was done at the Arts Educational Schools a few years ago. I I thought it was, in some ways, better than the original West End and Broadway production of Hal Prince. Um, But he's also more famous, I think, recently for having directed A Beautiful Thing, which has been revived a number of times. His production has been revived a number of times in London and on tour. But he's taken over the curve, and I think he's going to do very well there. We went to see Sue Townsend's The Secret Die of Adrian Mole, age 13 and three quarters, the musical, which obviously has the world's longest title for musical ever, Robert. I think there's probably one that's longer. I'm not sure if you'd call it a musical, but it's Anthony Newley, uh, Will Hieronymus Bosch Hump something something something. And I think that, even, mark. that Joan Collins was in it. So, uh, But it's a film, but I think it had songs, but it wasn't, it wasn't technically a musical. Um, yes, it is a very long title. Yes, I think it's a delightful show. Set in 1980s Leicester, which is obviously why they chose to put it in the Leicester curve. Um, because some parts of the area still look like it's from the 1980s. Yes, I think it's very, very clever show, uh, very entertaining, and the audience enjoyed it hugely. It has kids in it, um, which is the fashion nowadays, so I think, and you agree with me, Robert, and my friend Matthew that was with me as well, agreed, the best child performance you've ever seen? Well, we saw Sebastian Croft, and yes, I think possibly this is the certainly the most intelligent I wouldn't call him a child. I think he's 13, mm. but I'd call it an adolescent And three quarters. Yes, he, he, he was remarkable, very intelligent, held the show together. I mean, I've, I've found the Matildas that I've seen. I've seen a couple of Matildas, and I found them frighteningly good. But this boy, he doesn't seem like a child actor. He seems so intelligent that he holds the whole piece together. And mm. obviously, it is Adrian Mole's diary. It, it, we, we have to hear his thoughts and this boy manages sebastian croft manages to allow you to eavesdrop on what he's thinking all the way through the show he sings his songs beautifully he acts completely naturally 
and it's a very intelligent performance. A highlight for me was seeing our lovely friend Rosemary Ash on stage. Oh, Rosemary, Rosemary's absolutely marvellous in this. I mean, I mean, she's she's a a, a real pro, uh, and she's been stopping shows for for decades. Um, and I think she did the, she did that absolutely as required. She stopped the show in her in her uh, number as the mm. grandmother. It's a very small cast, which is a lovely concept for the show to have. Like people like Rosie playing the other school kids and things like that, and they double and treble. I mean, for example, Neil Ditt plays George Mole, the father, and Kirsty Hollis plays Pauline Mole. But for example, Amy Booth Steele plays three different parts. Yeah, as does Rosie Ash. As does Rosie Ash. Obviously, <clears throat> due to that, it's a small cast. It's a cast of ten. Did you count, Robert? I think it's ten. But you must remember that they have to cast four. That they cast three girls in the role of Pandora, and in the role of Nigel, there are three boys. And three and boys playing Adrian. Three boys playing Adrian. No, I think there are four boys four playing Four boys, Adrian, wow. And three boys playing Barry. Well, <laughs> that's a lot of kids. And um, the it leads us to two of the, not faults with the show, but issues um, that that we found. It's a very large stage for a very small show. Yes, I would have preferred to see the show in an intimate theatre. I'm hoping that they bring it to London. I think they will bring it to London. It's um, touring. They're going to tour it. To, <clears throat> yes, to the and I'm venues. sure on tour, but also if it does get to London, it seems to me it should go into a theatre like the Vaudeville or the Duke of York's mm -hmm. in, in the West End, uh, because that's the right size theatre for a show like this. And also, um, there are structural issues with the piece now they're aware of this and the reason they couldn't make a huge amount of changes is because of the fact they had about 12 kids to rehearse and every single change had to be rehearsed with all of the kids so if you saw the show in its original conception you probably would have thought act one is very long and very different in style to act two i read adrian mole when i was a child and it was laugh out loud funny and a lot of the funniest lines come from Sue Townsend herself. I don't think the book and the lyrics match up to the quality of the writing that Sue Townsend provides. Yes, I think that's right. I think it's very difficult to do that and still make this into a musical because obviously you need to to a certain extent theatricalize something which is told, you know, in a diary form in in Sue Townsend's book. But I think I think some of the songs are very good, but I found the lyrics weren't always witty enough and the problem is that you need a certain kind of intimacy to get away with this off-the-cuff uh, humour of a boy just confiding to his diary things which are in context funny. It's quite a difficult thing to do. Occasionally they do it well, occasionally you feel the book, the, the, the music and lyrics just miss. Uh, I think the, the also that the structure of the book as you say, the style and tone of the first act is different to is, the second act. Is the broad second act comic is very, and, and yeah. Act Two is very sentimentality based, yes, isn't it? But also, Act Two is is quite farcical, where Act One is trying to be wryly humorous. Act Two even borrows from the Book of Mormon when they put on a kind of politically correct but somehow very unpolitically correct production of the Nativity because A.G. Mole thinks he's a, a wonderful intellectual and he's always trying to get his poems published by the BBC. He puts on a... a, a it's the highlight of the show, isn't it, Robert? Well, not for me, but I think oh, okay. the audience found it the highlight of the show. It's very funny, it's very slapstick, uh, and it works. But I think it betrays the tone of Sue Townsend's Adrian Mole uh, stories. How would you like to see the piece changed? I think the first half needs to be shortened, and I think well, there's a false ending, isn't there, in that one? Yes, yes, there is. You certainly think this is this is about to end. The yes. whole show's about to end because the, the, because there's a typical <coughs> at one style closing number when all the characters come together and they sing their thoughts and their issues. And I was shuffling around getting my bag ready to go to the toilet, and then there's an extra fifteen minutes of stuff, and there was a a weaker, almost, um, and we'll talk more about this in a bit, but uh, revolting children style. 
Yes, I think that second song should have started the second act, yes. in fact. Um, this is directed by Luke Shepard, who is the associate director on Matilda, working alongside Lottie Wakeham. And there were echoes of Matilda in this piece, for obvious reasons, but also within the style of the production. Obviously, there's a school, because the kids go to school, so there's lots of standing on desks and stamping around and stuff. Although it's a very different school from, from that of Matilda. It's a, mm. You don't have Miss Trunch. But also, I mean, the, you do have Miss Trunch from the fact that there is a very... Um, cantankerous headmaster whom yes. Adrian Mould is, says I'm going to stand up and fight for what I believe in and nothing is going to stop me that's quite Matilda that's you know that is quite Matilda yes. I think but you've got a, a bullying older sort of bigger fatter schoolboy as, mm. as well and you've got um the girlfriend that he's totally besotted by I think those scenes actually work quite well and I think the stylization of the uh, uh, of the set and 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 the oh, scenes, the, 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 the set works was work. wonderful. It was all based around <clears throat> notebooks and pencils and blotches of ink and text that appeared. I thought that was absolutely charming. Well, again, that's taken a bit from Matilda because you you, you have the motif of books all the way through Matilda. The yeah. whole set is made up of books, um, but I think that. Uh, that's not that you know that's not to denigrate the the, the production it's 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 a, it's well organized it's got very good performances and it's and it's well directed i think the real problem is probably with the book uh i think that needs a bit of work before before if you know if it's to transfer to the west end um i think the music and lyrics are a little bit samey i i found although they're charming they're perfectly uh serviceable at times you wanted something just a little bit more. The one time we get it is in Rosie Ash's song, and that's a highlight. Musical lyrics are by Pippa Cleary and Jake Brunger, with book by Jake Brunger as well. We've had them on the show before. They've got great success with uh, Jet Set Go and, and other such shows like that from Edinburgh. And it's great for them to finally have the, the big outing, and I hope it, it's, it's, it's the success they deserve, because they're, they're clearly very talented for such a young writing team, Robert. This is a show that should transfer, and I think it'll find an audience in a small West End theatre. Do you think it works? Um, do you think it's a it, it's a coup for it to have such a young team writing it? Yes, I think that any any British show with such a young team augurs well for the future of musical theatre in Britain. The Curve is a wonderful place, and I really do urge musical theatre fans to go to it just to experience an out of London theatre that is that has money. And it's the most technically advanced theatre in the country. It's of Palladium scale, without the Palladium price. It's very comfortable. The sound is very good. I look forward to seeing what's happening there. They're doing Oliver in December. Now, you're a fan of Oliver, Robert. Are you tempted to do that drive all the way again? Well, yes, I am tempted to go up there for Oliver. I think they'll do a cracking job. Now, lots of Uh, exciting things uh, coming up here on Musical Talk. I, myself... I'm looking forward to going to see Gypsy again. Yes, um, Gypsy. I'm very excited about seeing that again. But I'd like to talk a little bit about Princess Ida at okay. the Finborough. Of course. Um, the, 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 the revival of Princess Ida. Uh, Is it Aida or Ida? Ida. Uh, a Princess Ida. Nothing to do with Aida. What's regarded as perhaps the most problematic work by Gilbert and Sullivan, it's got a, it's a three act structure which is unusual for for GNS, and it's been delightfully uh, revived by Phil Wilmot and the Steam Industry at uh, the Finborough. It's beautifully cast. I'm not sure I totally agreed with Phil Wilmot's adaptation. I think there are other ways to adapt the show, but it is problematic and it's quite a difficult job to do and he's done it very intelligently. It's a delightful evening. It's funny, it's witty, you're not never sure, and this relates back to the original, whether it's sending up feminism or whether it actually is a proto-feminist piece, but it certainly airs a lot of the feminist arguments. It's set in uh, a sort of women's university where no men are allowed, and there are a couple of sort of camp lesbian and gay jokes, but not very many. And I, I thought the cast were absolutely charming. Well, we should get you on to discuss it more with uh, our, our own Thos Ribbits, because he's a, a GNS expert and fan. Um, well, I'm not an expert on GNS, but I, but I know a good production when I see one. Now, I'm also uh, looking forward to going to see Carrie, which is being done at the Southwark Playhouse, the infamous carry-on that is Carrie. Do you know anything about it, Robert? 
I don't know anything at all about Carrie, except that it was one of the most famous flops that the Royal Shakespeare Company ever did, with no less than Barbara Cook starring in it. But, of course, we've also interviewed Betty Buckley some years ago. And Betty Buckley, famously or infamously, was in the production that went to Broadway from the Royal Shakespeare Company. And she said that there was nothing that should have made that show a flop, that actually it's quite a good show, but perhaps done badly and at the wrong time. Uh, Kim Criswell is starring in this production as the mother. So Yeah, I think it's great to see Kim Criswell. She doesn't get very many opportunities to actually work on stage, apart from in concert, and she's a very good performer, and I think the right kind of performer for that role. Mm. Now, I think soon, Robert, the highlight of your life will be coming up, and I can't wait to hear you discuss follies in concert at the Royal Albert Hall. Yes, I will certainly say a lot about Follies. It's got an absolutely stupendously good cast. And Biggins. Christopher Biggins is Biggins is going to be in it. What's he playing? I don't know, but he's playing someone in it. Oh, God. Uh, one One of the old ladies, no doubt. Yes, I think that's that. It's a, it's it's a wonderful and very exciting. Uh, who, it's going to be an exciting evening. Who else is in it? My own favourite, Lorna Luft, Judy Garland's other daughter, uh, is playing Hattie. So she'll sing Broadway Baby, and I'm sure she'll sing the hell out of that. Ruthie Henschel, who I think is a brilliant choice for Sally. Oh, there are there are hosts of stars too mm. too numerous to mention. I think oh Betty Buckley is playing Carlotta. So that's something worth going to see. If you haven't booked for it, book for it now, because I think it's going to be a a, a huge prestige hit, really. I mean, it's only only on for two performances. Our own Mike Dixon is conducting at the South Bank Centre Frank Lesser's How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying in concert. I've got tickets for that already. Yes, you're looking forward to that? Who's in that, Robert? It's a wonderful show. I don't know who's in it, but I know it's a wonderful show. Not Daniel Radcliffe, sadly. No, I saw Daniel Radcliffe doing it on Broadway. Now, speaking of Broadway, you're off there in May, aren't you? Yes, I'm winging my way to old Broadway. Uh, I'll be there from the 6th of May, and I've got a lot of shows lined up to see. I'm actually, one of the reasons I'm going is because I'm very interested in Candor and Ebb, and I'm going to see again the production of The Visit, which I saw uh, at Williamstown last year. But I'm also going to see the Encores production of um, Zorba, one of their shows from the late 60s and that's very seldom done so i'm really they've written a lot of stuff haven't they i mean it's more than just cabaret curtains in chicago they've done shows with you know other letters of the alphabet beginning in the titles Uh, they've written as many shows as sometimes certainly thanks robert we're going to end this episode with a full song from sue townsend's the secret diary of adrian mole age 13 and three quarters the musical written by pippa cleary and jake brunger this is intellectual boy do listen again next week please do follow us on twitter at twitter.com slash musical talk or facebook at facebook.com slash musical talk or visit our brand new website at musical talk podcast dot weebly w-e-e-b-l-y dot com and uh, we'll see you soon thanks a lot bye honestly my family just don't understand me. Perhaps when I'm famous, and when my diary's been discovered, people will understand the torment of being a 13 and 3 quarter year old intellectual. It's so hard being deep, I'm forever losing sleep, thinking grand and amazing things. Like the birds and the bees, how they make the holes in cheese and philosophies of kings. And although I've got plans, it seems no one understands all the torment. Can't they see that life is so hard for an intellectual boy like me? I know. I'll send the poem to the BBC. Yes. They don't know what to do with it. There's loads of intellectuals there. Dear man at the BBC, here's a piece of my poetry. It's by me, and you'll agree it's very smart. Like a little piece of art, and I know it's all by heart. Good start. It could go on the radio, you could put it on your show. After a piece on violent dogs in Walthamstow, everyone will know the tap, it'll put me on the map. What a piece of poetry. Seriously, these words, they just flow out of me. And surely you're bound to agree what this intellectual boy can be. Ha! Well, if this doesn't show them, then nothing will. I bet they never knew their son was a genius. Just imagine their faces When I'm on the BBC Everyone will look at me What a sharp and dapper chap I'll have to be I will grow a big moustache I'll be looking really flash And the world will listen Cos when you're 13 and 3 quarters They don't really care But I'm 13 and 3 quarters And I'm so nearly there Elton John and my
My spots will have gone away I'll be tall, I'll be lean I'll be every woman's dream And I'll have sex every day And I won't live in strife Cos I'll find myself a wife Who will always make my tea So, man at the BBC Please take a chance on me like it. I wrote it in pen. Yours faithfully, Adrian Albert Mole.